Tigers eliminated from FIBA World Cup after Argentina lost. Defending champion Naomi Osaka upset at the US Open and European transfer window closes with some very interesting deadline day deals. My name is Deji Amatoimbo. Welcome to Sports Express brought to you by MTN. We'd like to thank you for joining us for Tuesday's edition of Sports Express brought to you by MTN. We go to international newsroom. Huge upset at the US Open. Here's Pedro Peter with all the latest from Lo Frosche Middles and elsewhere. Thanks, DG. World number one, Naomi Osaka, she knocked out of the 2019 US Open following a round of 16 defeats to Switzerland's Belinda Bensic on Monday. The Japanese top seed and defending champion was broken in the opening set and in the fifth game of the second on her way to a 7 5 6 4 loss to Bensic, who has now beaten her three times this year. Osaka will lose her ranking as world number one, with Australia's Ashley Barty set to return to the top spot. In other results, Elisa Mertens edged East past Christiane of the U.S. is 6-1-6-1, while Dona Vekic of Croatia saw off Julia Gorgias of Germany, 6-7, 7-5, 6-3 in 2 hours and 42 minutes. And to the ATP tour, Spanish second seed Rafael Nadal advanced to the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open after downing 2014 champion Marin Silic of Croatia in the round of 16 clash on Monday. The 33-year-old showed quality as he battled to a 6-3, 3-6, 6-1-6-2 victory over Silic and will face Argentine 20th seed Diego Schwartzman in the last eight. Who had accounted for German 16 and is under very in four sets to progress. Elsewhere, Gar Monfils cruised past Pablo Andujar 6 1 6 2 6 2, while Italian Matteo Berrettini powered past Andre Rublev of Russia 6 1 6 4 7 6. Lastly, to, to athletics, the United States anti doping agency USADA has dropped its charge against sprinter Christian Coleman following guidance from the World Anti Doping Agency. The 23 year old American faced an automatic one year ban for missing three drugs tests with USADA revealing that it had withdrawn its charge on advice to receive from WADA. Coleman, what? Coleman who ran the world leading time of 9.81 seconds in the Diamond League in California last June, is now free to compete at the World Athletics Championship to build for Doha Qatar on 28th September. Thank you very much, Pedro Peter. That was the international news report. We're going to be there. Together we analyze how the Tigers got beaten at the World Cup by Argentina. We'll be back on the Nigerian sports scene in a minute. It's an Nigerian sports on Sports Express brought to you by MTN. But look who is here. But hey, we watched the game together yesterday. The Tigers losing to Argentina 94-81. Um, the usual things we talked about: turnovers, free throws missed, um, mid-range jumpers, perimeter shooting. In the first quarter, Argentina ha had a free run into our lane, and we didn't box them out and all of that. You know. Fine margins, like you said, but at the end of the day, the experience showed Argentina is ranked five in the world. They showed the experience. They also lost to Russia. I didn't realize that until I checked this morning. The two teams who lost were in the top yeah, ten. Top 10 yeah. So uh, maybe it's not so bad, but it was just a case of missed opportunities. I agree with you, Lady, but remember that um, from the moment we have, we have always insisted that the game to win was that was that Russia. Russia. Yeah. That it's not going to be a long, a long, a long thing. Like I, I would say we look, look at balance, and uh, but for my money, I think. The the the, uh, the Tigers gave the Argentines a run for, for their money. Mm. Um, the Argentines built up a lead. The Tigers cut it out, and then of course, as it was against Russia, they were both tied at half time. And then the last quarter, the final quarter, unlike well, the game against Russia, where the uh, the Tigers had their noses, noses in front, and the Argentines didn't give them that opportunity. Mm. Mm. They cut the lead to I think two or three points at some, at some point, and then towards the end of the game. And no, it was only seven points. The final seconds, seconds they gave up two and then easy three, three, three points. They, they yeah. simply just stopped. They, they stopped defending. Mm. Mm. Uh, but like you said, uh, fine margins. Uh, I still think this team, this team has potential. Yeah. Just because you has been the star, Mister Amelie said, "It's just one." That was, was gonna, that was my next question to you. Jordan you know, Umura, Ike Wamu. These are young lads, and there's mm. a chance to build this team. There are still other youngsters out there who still okay. want to play for Nigeria. Now let's get to this. But okay. But um, the, the stories out of the camp, the stories of retirement will mean that some, some of these guys will be having second thoughts. Okay. I know, for instance, that mm. um, Adebayo of, uh, of Miami, the center, is, is talked about playing for Nigeria. But when you hear things like, oh, they are not supporting us, I think we need to get that. Right. I think this is what, what the mm. sports minister needs to get, get on. going I was, on. I was going to, get, come, I was going to come to that. We heard all the talk, all the complaints about some of the players going to the World Cup about the lack of support. And none of that. If these everybody was getting get on their case now, they lost, blah 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 blah. But we have to be honest with ourselves. Did this team get the kind of support we a World Cup team representing Nigeria should have got to? Wait, wait, wait. Let me make my own case. Mm. Let, let me make my own case. Not this team. 
this sport, basketball. This sport, yeah. Because looking at the teams play, playing uh, at, at this World Championships, one, a team is the only one that has no sponsor, no mm -hmm. share sponsor. Yeah. Nigeria yeah. is the only one. Yeah. Secondly, Nigeria is the only country that has no supporters at all. At all. You won't see anybody in the stands calling the Nigerian flag. Senegal, uh, Angola, all, all countries have support. Yes. Yeah. And that was a good part. Was something we noticed yesterday. FIBA gave five Nigerians accreditation to attend this World Cup. Five, just five. Out of all, all. I think only one of us made it. Mm. The remaining four of us we are still looking for sponsors. <laughs> so I think it's I this sport. Mm. It is from the sport okay. history to the federation. Yes, to I, was, the I was going to come to that. The federations, I feel, they are a bit too cap in hand mentality. I feel we qualified for this World Cup last year. Yeah. I feel if the we're, federation, we're the first country to qualify. The I feel if the federation themselves, instead of yes, we will get government funding. If we went out, engage corporate Nigeria, show them the opportunity, show them the value, you would have done something. Not just sit back because that's why we appoint some of you guys yeah. as federation bosses. Because really, to be honest, government cannot come no, up no, with no. all the money you need. Definitely, all about the Also, the federations themselves are not doing themselves any good. At, at this point, I have to agree with you, Diki, because I'm like, like you said, um, I, I, and I kept saying it. In fact, uh, Mr. Agbedea he has been booing me because he mm. said I, I made him believe this this thing will win the World Cup. <laughs> well, you know, this 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 is arguably the best team we have assembled ever, and that, that for me that's a selling point. Mm. And the way they blaze through the qualifiers, they played some fantastic yeah. basketball right in front of us. I think this this is the point where. The NBF should have engaged corporate yeah. look, this is, mm. this is what we are offering you. Yeah. This is what is possible. Back onto the court. I think it's, it's making them a good team. I think there's great potential in this team. Tell us, this will have a chance of qualifying for the Olympics next year. Can, you, yes. can you tell us that? Now, to the, to, to the, on, uh, the game against Iran. Yeah. And they are playing against Costa Rica tomorrow. So, to the can beat Costa Rica. Mm. But, Costa Rica or Puerto Rico? Sorry, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Okay. But if it defeats Korea today, we'll be the top team in Africa. How many today? Sorry, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Okay. If, if he defeats uh, South Korea tomorrow morning, we'll be, we'll be the best, based on uh, on the margin, margin of our of our, of of our, our losses. losses. We'll yeah. be the best team in Africa. We'll be the team uh, that have one foot at the Olympics oh, until okay. Tunisia beats uh, 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 Puerto, uh, Puerto Rico. Rico. But if Tunisia lose, if Tunisia lose to Puerto Rico by any margin at all, it means we are probably if we beat Korea, we will get that automatic automatic ticket to the World Cup, to the to the Olympics. As it is now, um, if we don't defeat South Korea mm -hmm. and any other African country wins a game, mm -hmm. we, we are probably out of it because the, 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 the best uh, 16 non-qualifying teams uh, 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 will go to the Olympic tournament okay. where the teams that are going to the Olympics So it's, will still, be so it's still something to it's play still for. Something to play okay, for. all right. That's something good. That's good to hear. Thank you very much, buddy. When we return from the break, the World Soccer Report. Welcome back. Here. This one is here. It's time for the World Soccer Report. Don't forget, you can watch this show on the following platforms, Facebook, forward slash Sport Vision Nigeria, on Twitter, at Sport Vision NG, and on YouTube, our YouTube channel is Sport Vision NG. So you can go there and watch the show after listening to it, if you would like to do that. Of course, we'd like to also subscribe to the YouTube channel when you get there. Thank you very much for all of that, and thank you for all the engagement we got, having started this yesterday. Yeah, man, this one is here. Um, well, you have your team of the week, I know about that, but quickly, <laughs> let's go to European deadline day. And PSG make some interesting moves on final day. Mario Icardi, I don't think anybody, well, some people would hit it at that, but with nothing concrete. And then, for me, the key one, Keylor Navas, who I re rate as highly as a very good goalkeeper. Keylor Navas in a swap deal, Ariola going to Madrid, Keylor Navas coming to PSG. So, a couple of useful additions by PSG on final day. Well, first of all, players were not in the running for Mario Kadi initially. Okay. Everything seemed to be turning towards either Juventus or Napoli. Okay. But someone like I think I was, I think I was more comfortable with him going abroad than selling him to a uh, rival. Now, the critical one is uh, Ariola going to Real Madrid. Uh, I worry, it's a young goalkeeper that I rate very highly, but I worry about his motivation. This, he's going to go to Real and potentially be number two, depending on how Couture does in the next few weeks. Now is a good goalkeeper, and what uh, PSG have been doing lately is trying to sign as much experience as possible with the Champions League in focus. Good deal for PSG, not so sure about it being a good deal for Real Madrid. 
Okay, you hear me? Let's leave all the transfers and of course a couple of other ones that uh, Mkhitaryan on loan to Roma is just gone south for it. Yeah, I'd like Mkhitaryan. guys running Arsenal right now mm. to do some really good stuff. And of course, FIFA was the three usual suspects, their names have been in the hat. So let's go over to your team of the week here, and I hope there are no con well, there will always be controversies. <laughs> let me, don't let me say there are no controversies today. Team of the week this week is in the 3-4-3 formation with the UGPP of Power in goal. After Palmer went away to Odin to win 3 uh, 1. A back three of Masuako of West Ham had a solid performance in defense. There's Vestergaard, who had a goal scoring performance and a solid defensive performance against Toothless Masters in Manchester United. There's Pavard of Bayern Munich, who had a goal and an assist for Bayern as a good six pass minds. In midfield, you have Marius Butler of Union Berlin, who scored a brace against Dortmund as the newly promoted side defeated Borussia Dortmund 3 1. There's Genduzi of Arsenal, who was electric in midfield in the North London Derby. There's Roberto Perez, who scored a brace as Susuna got a well deserved draw against Barcelona. And of course, there's Abdullah Traore, who scored the only goal for Nords as Nords defeated Montpellier. My front three includes hat trick heroes Timo Weller and Domenico Berardi, who scored hat tricks for RB Leipzig and Sassuolo, uh, respectively. And then there's Kuhn and Guerrero, who scored a brace and an assist for Manchester City as he put four past uh, Brighton. Manager of the week is none other than Rose Fisher of Union Berlin as the winning promoter side got Dortmund their first defeat and the potential potential dent on their title challenge in the bonus league. I was waiting for one name. What name? Gendouzi. If you hadn't put Gendouzi, I even me, I would have fought you this morning. <laughs> but also, you know, from last year, I, used, I spoke to some Arsenal fans. I like the guy's attitude. In, he doesn't shy away no from when things are not going well. He shows himself. He's always looking for the ball. And then people say he's creative. Look at the pass for the second goal. So, and somebody you always like to have on this team. He was saying something about being invited to the French national team and how, how he was in awe of seeing his manager and all of that. So, a good story. Thank you very much, um, Yemi. That's our show. Don't forget, you can watch the show on a following platforms, Sportvision MG, that's our YouTube channel, Facebook for slash Sportvision Nigeria, and our Twitter, Sportvision MG. All right. Um, talking about Twitter, the best of the rest relates to that social platform. A Nigerian footballer, Richard Ali, has bagged a trial with Irish Premier League outfit Cork City, following a Twitter post in which he appealed for the trial, and that Twitter post reached 50,000 retweets. This is what happened. Ali had applied to the club for a trial, the club retorted and said if he could get 50,000 retweets, he would get a trial. He probably went on Twitter, appealed, and voila, he got 50,000 retweets, and he has gotten a trial. We wish him luck. The power of social media. My name is Dick Germantoimov. Thanks for your time. Good morning.